Hey again, it's me, Nino as always, and this is my portfolio for both first and second quarter. Without any delay, let's start. My first topic today is... Ah! Um, hey, can you shut that off for a moment? I'm filming here. Oh, sorry about that. Well, that was fitting since we're talking about sound. sound. Specifically, how we hear sound. Okay, so first, sound waves enter our ear and vibrate our eardrums, which jerks the hammer and hits the anvil and moves to the stripes. All of it leads to the cochlea, which converts the sound waves into neural signals for the auditory nerve to receive and finally move to the brain. So there's the brief overview of what I learned about our hearing. Our body is so amazing, isn't it? Such complex design in just one of two of our ears. So ah! What is that? Wait, 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 no! Oof! Ugh. Where am I? Ugh. I'm a puppet? This is fine, I guess? I mean, I was a puppet a few quarters ago. Ugh. Are you... Ugh. Hey, what are you doing? Did you forget what you learned about initiative? No one's going to benefit from you ignoring him. But if you help him, someone will benefit from it. Him! What's going on? Do you need help? Ugh, my arm. It's unstitched. Don't worry. If I remember, the doctor's here. I'll take you to him. Ooh! Greetings, fellow traveler. What brings you here? I need to see the doctor. There's an injured puppet. Hmm, I see. But to pass, you must answer this question. What is 9 plus open parentheses 9 minus 4 times 2 close parentheses? Oh, I remember doing this at school. What do you call it again? Oh, yeah. PENDAS, which stands for Parentheses, Exponents, Multiplication, Division, Addition, and Subtraction, which also correlates to the order of operations. So first, I multiply 4 and 2 in the parentheses, which would be 8, then I minus 8 by 9 inside the parentheses, which would be 1, then lastly, I add 9 and 1, which is 10. The answer is 10. Ooh, excellent. You may pass the gate. His arm, it's unstitched. Can you help him? Thank you so much, doctor. There it is. It must be the portal that got me here. That must also mean it's the way for me to go back to normal. <sighs> From the looks of things, I'm still not in the animated world, or even in person. But hey, while waiting for that weird blue portal that appears all the time, might as well talk about history. And this is more or so a sequel to the last time I was a paper puppet, since we'll be talking about one of Henry VIII's daughters, Mary Tudor, or as we all know, Bloody... Mary. Mary was daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, and unlike most people in England, Mary was Roman Catholic. When she was eight, her father had an annulment, basically a divorce, from her mother. She stayed with her father, and she wasn't even allowed to see her own mother, even at Catherine's death. After that, Henry didn't pay that much attention to his daughter. But luckily, his wives were kind to her. Even though Mary was ruling by herself, she was capable. And at first, she was tolerant to the Protestants. Mary pursued a royal marriage to Philip II, son of Charles V. 
Philip hoped that a son would be born to them to unite both Spain and England. Soon, Mary was expecting a child with Philip, but sadly, it was a false pregnancy. With nothing left to look forward to, Philip left Mary. Mary made some changes in England by bringing back Roman Catholic practices and she even imprisoned the Protestant leaders. Mary failed at marriage and at motherhood, but she would do her best not to fail restoring the Catholic Church. And with the help of two Catholic bishops, Mary began persecuting the Protestants. Around 300 Protestants were burned and killed. At this time, Mary had been described as insane. In 1558, Mary had multiple illnesses. She passed the crown to her half-sister, Elizabeth. And so, that was the end of the tragic life of Mary Tudor, the Queen of England. It's sad, really, how she was... Wait! Wait, 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 wait! Not done yet! Not done yet! Ah! Ah! Wait, wait! No! Why are we still here? Why didn't God press the reset button when everything went wrong? Because He loves us, doesn't He? He created this beautiful place for us to live and take care of. And when we failed Him, abandoned Him for worldly desires, He gave us His Son, Jesus, so that we can be together with Him again. God loves us. I mean, He is love. That's awesome. Anyways, gotta work on something. See ya.